Well, <laughs> the plot thick is Vincent, our uh, our favorite uh, our favorite drama king, uh, Kyrie Irving, um, has a list. <laughs> he has a list of teams. Um, so you just heard Lakers, Clippers, the aforementioned Knicks, the Heat, the Mavs, the 76ers. Now Woj says that none of those teams have the cap space to sign him without uh, the Nets' help. Um, you know I'm rooting for him to go back to the Lakers, which I think it was Sam Amick said earlier today that yep. there's substantive chatter around the league about this Lakers thing becoming a reality. Uh, it just goes to show where there's a will, will there's a way. Um, now again, those are the teams who Irving has interest in, but he isn't necessarily a priority for all of them. Word is that the Mavs, the Sixers, and I believe the Clippers are not all that interested. Correct me if I'm wrong on any of that. You obviously know more than I do. What do you make of these latest developments? You know, Michael Smith, I got a list. You know what's on my list? What's on Kelly it? Ro- Kelly Rowland, Regina <laughs> Hall, <laughs> Regina King. You know what I mean? Yeah. I got, uh, if the got a list, I, know where you're going I got my list too. You know what I right. mean? Don't I we can, all. I can yeah. go. I can go high in the sky, with the rest of them. You can look, man. Right. What what song did we say? Yeah, high hopes. <laughs> look, look, we wish. Look, 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 what song did we talk about yesterday that was remade? Love Don't Live Here No More. They never yeah. loved him to begin with. You know what I mean? Like, like, like Kyrie, I don't think he has ever realized that his value around the NBA was was pretty much limited to his proximity to Kevin Durant. If Kyrie, mm. the talent, matched up with Kyrie the production and Kyrie, the winning player, if all those things were parallel, those teams would be trying to come and get him. You know what I mean? But here's the thing. We don't know how much Kyrie actually affects winning, which is completely separate from Kyrie showing up, which is completely separate from Kyrie not not getting injured, which happens a lot of times. So if you're the Los Angeles Clippers, if you're the Dallas Mavericks, why would he go to Philadelphia? First off, wait. Don't him and don't him and James Harden not like see eye to eye. You know what I mean? Like, I don't. I make yeah. it make sense. Now, now here's what I will say to you: Have you ever had a friend, Michael Smith, that you know always happened to be in the wrong place at the wrong time? There was always a logical reason for something oh, messing yeah. up around this person all the time. Oh, he always had like, explanation for it. Oh yeah, absolutely. See to see what had happened was kind of friend. Yeah, no doubt. It's. It's all I'm telling you, it's always something. And I had a friend in college who called me one day or at two in the morning rather and said, hey, you got to come get me. What did you do? Well, see, what happened was I knocked the door down with my shoulder because I was outside in the snow with no clothes on. How'd you get outside? Right. Well, see, what happened was that's Kyrie. It's always a justification. The micro creates a macro. Every micro has a justification. The macro just yeah, ain't but, adding up on me. Yeah, but the question is, is Kevin Durant the kind of friend that says, who whose car are we taking? When Kyrie walks in and says, don't ask no questions. I need your help. We're going to hurt some people. Does Kevin Durant say, whose car are we taking? So Kurt Heelan, I listen, man. Kyrie ain't worth the trouble. And, and the way I feel right now, if you can get swept with KD and Kyrie last year, if you're the Brooklyn Nets, you could do bad all by yourself. And maybe this experiment was just was never meant to be. So even if it cost them Kevin Durant, presumably in a trade, if I'm Brooklyn, I'm looking at the bright side. I'm looking at the silver lining. I'm turning this frown upside down, you mm-hmm. know, and if, and if and if Kevin Durant, even though reportedly he's like, hey, you know, my name is Paul. That's between y'all. My name is Bennett. I ain't in it. You know, he's uh, whatever assessing his future. If he determines that he thinks he can do better elsewhere, then both he and Kyrie can go be great somewhere else. And if I'm Brooklyn, I'm rebooting rather than invest long term into an individual in Kyrie and a partnership with Kyrie and KD, which so far does not appear to be worth the trouble. Does that make sense? It does. I think, look, I think Joseph Sayoda and Sean Marks have had to have already, frankly down and had that exact conversation because they built an organization that Kyrie and KD wanted to come to with look all the young players they brought up and developed right like they got Spencer Dimwitty and 
Karis LeVert and on down the line. Like they built this culture of players who were going to go there and play hard and develop and win. And they built a foundation that those guys wanted to go to. And they took that culture and topped it on its head. Anyway, all right, KD and K Kyrie, we're, we're whatever they need. We're, we're going to bend over backwards. Whatever you guys want to do, we're going to want to run this your way. You're going to, Kyrie's like, we're going to, what was his comment after the season? Like, you know, I look forward to helping build this team back with like, like a partnership. Like they gave them a power and it didn't work out for them. And I think they're having that exact talk, man. Like, hey, maybe we want to be on the maybe outside. Maybe so bad. Maybe we're willing to let it's it go. So you know, bad. it's all right. Yeah. 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 Do that. I mean, and I don't, by the way, that's why I think you hear so much smoke and heat around the Lakers, which is they have put themselves in the same situation. They don't have a path. They don't have another right. path right now. It is, it, it, their path to being contender this year is get Kyrie. Right. Uh, here, here's, I think, here's my, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I was, was going to say the Brooklyn Nets to me were a colorless franchise before all of this happened. Like, yeah, you acquired some cute pieces but they weren't a franchise of consequence. But you still go for it and you still make that move. Even though it crashed yes. and burned, this is I all agree. worth it because Agreed. you had no identity before that. They made themselves relevant. They made themselves a contender. No, I I, I'm, I don't look at it in hindsight and be like, it was a mistake. As a matter of fact, I've argued with Michael Holly about that a lot, whether it's the Clippers going in on Paul George and, and Kawhi Leonard, whether it's the uh, the Nets going in on, on, the, on their big three with Harden. Uh, I'm like, that's what you do. You put yourself in the conversation. But these guys, wait for it, Vinny, ain't getting no younger, so we might as well do it. <laughs> it's just one of those like I just, I just kind of feel like you, can't, you, you know can't, what? You just, just you can't let I can't it go. help it. You just, you I can't, can't let, let it go. go. But it just it's just but but as, but as you both know, it's always something with Kyrie. It's just always something. And you know, if KD feels like you know Ben Simmons and whatever pieces you get back for Kyrie ain't enough, then all right, man, so be it. Eventually, you're gonna have to start over anyway. So you might as well start over now. As opposed to trying to fool yourself into thinking it's your contender, uh, that you could build it overnight, Kurt. Well, and I think you, I like the Clipper analogy in the sense that, yeah, you're, you're the second team in the market in a way, right? You're not the mm -hmm. most popular team in the market. People want to play for the Clippers. Like they, they treat their players well. That is a first class organization. They are seen as a destination because they're in Los Angeles, because Steve Ballmer can spend indiscriminately, frankly, and they're building a new facility. Like, they have a good rep. I think the Nets may have built some of that same stuff, right? Like, if you're a free agent in a couple of years, you might look at Brooklyn and say, you know what? I can make that work. I, I, future free agents aren't going to be scared off by what happened. And I think you're right. They can rebuild this thing around whomever, right? Like, they, they go back to the bottom and develop guys. You know, you know, you're not getting Kenny Atkinson back to do it, but right. <laughs> you could, you could well, still me... bring some of that culture back. Well, let me let me let me tap the brakes, not pump them. Let me just kind of tap the brakes real quick and just ask y'all this, because you know you guys both know how the game works. You know how it works when it comes to people leaking stuff for leverage and negotiations, get public. Kurt, I know you've wrote plenty of times, um, you and Dan Feldman at, at Pro Basketball Talk, that people around the league believe that you've talked to that they'll eventually get this worked out. That Kyrie Irving. The $36 million that the Nets can offer him is better than, you know, anything else he could realistically get. He's not going to re realistically leave $30 million on the table, but we are talking about Kyrie. Um, and this is all just a game of chicken, as you've called it, Kurt. Is, but when somebody, puts out, when somebody puts out a list, I said this with Russell Wilson, when his agent put out a list, not last season, but season before, last offseason, that the teams that if the, the the Seahawks were willing to trade Russell Wilson, these are the teams he would go to. I'm like, oh, he's got one foot out the door. It's not a matter of if, but when this relationship ends. Does it feel that way now? Like with every little leak, it just feels like they're not going to come to common ground. Yes, or could they? at least it does to me, okay. Vinny. I, yeah, I'd be yeah. curious what you think, but yeah, to me, it definitely feels like this went from okay, it's a negotiating tactic to no. This is, I mean, could they still work it out? Yes, if this if logic were going to prevail, would they still work it out? Probably, but it's Kyrie, so I'm not necessarily betting on logic. I, I think put it like this: I think it's gone so far down the road, and I literally just came to this conclusion maybe in the past couple of days that there's been so many lobs thrown from Kyrie's camp that how do you show back up in that building? I mean, let's be perfectly honest: it ain't like he was showing up in the building every day anyway. 
You know, he's got more, and I wrote it, he's got he's got more influence in basketball conversation than he actually does in the organization and the franchise that he wants to have equity in. But equity requires you showing up. So they'd probably rather not have the headache. He probably doesn't want to be there. The person who probably wants him there more than anybody is Kevin Durant. And if Kevin Durant is going full Pontius Pilate, I'm washing my hands of it, then what other ally does he have in the building? Hmm. Is, K- is KD washing his hands of it? I believe that Kevin Durant knows Kyrie Irving well enough to know, hey, if you take it to a certain point, there's going to be no turning back. And Kyrie Irving lit the match and said, okay. <laughs> so this isn't, so this is, so just to be clear, is this necessarily a package deal? Does one, does, does Kyrie walking lead to KD walking or is KD like not necessarily? Okay, no, okay. See, maybe I, no, I, I was still, I was still on the, I was still on the impression that if Kyrie left, that that put the Nets in danger of losing KD. No. Is that not the case? I think KD could walk, but I think he, it's dependent upon what they get back for Kyrie. And here's the thing: Kevin Durant is under contract for four years. Like he's not in the position okay. to issue the trade demands and say trade me here or there. And I mean, yeah, we can ask the question: Who's a Kevin Durant away from a title? But at the same time, he kind of has to stick it out. He cares a little bit more about his reputation than Kyrie does or a lot more about his reputation than Kyrie does. Mm. He doesn't want to be looked at as a carpet bagger who was who who left in a pout because his, you know, wayward friend decided to overplay his hand. Uh, okay. That leverage issue is legit, too, because if you're a small to middle market team that could never get Kevin Durant, and this is what happened with Ben Simmons and Sacramento getting in the mix. If you're Atlanta right now or somebody like, here's your chance. Like, here's your chance to try to get in on having Kevin Durant when he doesn't have the leverage to kind of force his way easily to, you know, whatever major market he wants to go to, whatever team he sees as his next fit, which I, that's a whole different conversation. And I'm not, honestly, I don't know what he'd be thinking on that. So we know the Lakers could use Kyrie Irving. Um, we already talked about that. So the other team, and I kind of married the draft last night uh, with this story, is right across town. Uh, and that's the Knicks, supposedly on Kyrie's list. But they appear to have Jalen Brunson at the top of their list. Uh, much to the chagrin of Knicks fans who wanted them to do something other than trade all their picks last night. So, Kurt kind of just combining those things. What do you think of the direction of the Knicks, which is so in question that Leon Rose felt compelled to put out a statement explaining their strategy? I love that Leon Rose had to put out a statement to try to calm (laughs) Knicks fans down. That's like, you know, it's a weird thing because like, on one hand, we've applauded the Knicks for not, not being so rash. And and I don't even mean bold, but like, Hey, we're not going to throw money after Russell Westbrook, right? We're not going to short think short term. We're going to get extra picks. We're going to leave ourselves flexible. We're going to make smart decisions. But at some points, man, you got to take your swing. At some point, you got to jump in there. And maybe maybe this draft wasn't it. Kyrie would certainly be it. Although you pull that trade off and you've got Julius Randle, R.J. Barrett, Kyrie, you still got work to do. <laughs> That's still, what is that, the yeah. sixth seed in the East? Like, there's still a lot of work to do there. But it makes... That's a lot. I don't know. I, I, if I'm the Knicks, I'm jumping in on that more than I'm jumping in on Jalen Brunson because you know who else has got Jalen Brunson on the top of his list? Mark the Cuban. The Mavericks. <laughs> With more yeah. money in another year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't think... I, I, once again, I think Kyrie, if you're a winning team, Kyrie may help you get a little bit closer to over the top. But if you're not a good team, Kyrie does not make you a good team or a better team. He just makes you a team that's a little more flammable. That people talk about, right? Or a team that people talk about on programs such as this. Um, listen, Kurt, I know I know you hesitate to uh, to identify like we all do, winners and losers in less no. less than a day, let alone less than <laughs> two or three years outside of a draft. But nonetheless, which teams did you like, and what other teams beside the Knicks did you scratch your head at what they did last night? My big winner, I think, was Detroit uh, because Jaden Ivey falls to them. This is, we talked about this yesterday. Jaden Ivey falls to yeah. them at five because 
Look, maybe Keegan Murray fits really well in Sacramento, playing off ball out of the system with De'Aaron Fox and and Tomatis Bonas. But man, that's a lot of talent to pass up in Jaden Ivey. That's a lot of athleticism to let go. Ivey and Cade Cunningham in the backcourt, they go get uh, Duran, they go get a nice center out of Memphis who could be their center of the future. Like, I really like the way that team is starting to come together and be built um, after the after the you know after the grant trade like they've still got flexibility to go out this summer and i don't know are they going to go after and we talked about like hey they're going to go after um deandre uh, ayton yeah deandre it, ayton it doesn't yeah, feel I don't necessary know, are you going to do that now yeah i don't know if that's it i don't know if i'm as eager yeah. to do that now but what it, they've still got money that they can spend on players and they can try to go poach a colin sexton or somebody else they want to bring or, or maybe a, another bigger wing they've got money to go do that now and and build something that's sustainable. Like I just, I think they were the one of the biggest winner last night. Well, before we get to your your, I don't want to say loser, but head scratcher, Vinny. To that point about Jalen Duran versus DeAndre Ayton, could it be that Duran just needs a little more development time, and maybe depending on how mm-hmm. long yeah. you sign Ayton, maybe it's different timeline. So Ayton is just starting center now. Duran comes off the bench. Maybe they could play together and feel like it in today's NBA. I don't know. What do you think? Is it still are they still a player or or not for Ayton? You just have the option. And that's the one thing that this franchise has not had, has had, has been options to go with an established veteran or to go young. Like Jalen Duran is 18 years old. He's not turning 19 until like three weeks into the season. So you're not going to expect him to come in and step in and contribute immediately at a high level. But once again, this team's timeline is not to win right now. I think this team's timeline, if you look at uh, Luka Doncic, and Trey Young and John Morant, all those guys made the first their first playoffs in year three. If you got a superstar at that type, sort of level, year three is the year where you make the playoffs. This is year two for Kay Cunningham. So you can afford to go after DeAndre Aiden because he still fits, but you don't have to be forced into it. You can disperse that money and get some responsible veterans because you actually got a whole lot younger yesterday than even before yesterday when you were one of the youngest teams in the league already. Yeah. Who confused you last night, Kurt? Besides the Knicks, besides the Knicks. I, yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> assuming the Knicks, the other team that confuses us every year, um, and I don't even think they confuse me. Sacramento shot, thought short term. I, I think Ivy. There were other. They they're thinking about making the playoffs next year, and in that sense, Keegan Murray, who comes out of <laughs> who can shoot, he's kind of good at a little bit of good at everything, right? But yeah, he can yeah. comes out of a system in Iowa where he can walk in and play off those guys and give them minutes and put up points and make them less bad this year. That, that, sh- that short-term thinking is why they're the Kings, man. That's why they are where they are rather than, hey, let's, yeah, yeah, we got Fox, but I'm going to take Ivy and I'm going to figure out who's best. And I, if they can't play together, we'll get on with one of them. But I'm going to just take the best player and develop talent. It was a, it was just more short-term thinking from the, from the Kings. And it's, Hey, maybe they get all the way up to the eight seed this year. Congratulations, you can hang a banner. Is there a pick? We've 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 concentrated, obviously, you know, as most people do at the top of the draft or even the lottery. Opposite of the Knicks and Kings, is there a pick? And not just because of the player, but because of the team that drafted him, that jumped out to either one of you, jumped out to your sources, where you're like, that's a legit steal. Because in the NBA draft, a steal is like pick six or seven. But like I'm talking about like a legit teens, 20s, hell, even second round possibly, a steal where somebody was drafted by an organization that not only knows how to identify a talent, but also develop that talent. Vinny? I hadn't Any heard that, anything. That here? No, I w- I'll tell you what jumped out to me. Mark Williams with Charlotte because they needed a big man. And when I looked at Boston and what Robert Williams III did this year, turning into one of the premier defenders, being able to defend at all three levels and defend elite at the rim. Mark Williams strikes me as somebody that if Charlotte player development, if they're coaching, wait, don't even have a coach yet. My bad. You know what I'm saying? Even when you do something (laughs) right, you're doing it the wrong way. But even if if they get their coaching right, they get their player development right, that's somebody that I think could actually make an immediate impact for, for the Charlotte Bobcat Hornets. (laughs) <laughs> Kurt, the Bobcats. Um, I'll tell you the other team that I thought had a really sneaky good draft was, and I, they do it every year, the Spurs. But they get 
Malachi Brenham deep in there. They get Blake, they, Blake uh, Wesley out of the Notre Dame. They get guys with athleticism, shooting potential. Well, Wesley can't shoot, but they get potential, right? And they're one of the – because they're the Spurs, like you'd be like, they wait three years. Like I – We'll bring them along a little bit slowly. We will develop them. You know, we'll get their shots there. We'll work on their weaknesses. I just think they took three guys in this draft who are just kind of high upside. We can develop them type of guys, and then they're going to. And I'm, I'm kind of high on Malachi anyway. I just I think him falling to 20 was a kind of a steal in the first place. But I, overall, I just like the direction of building that that patient building that they do in in San Antonio. No doubt. Well, I mean, for me, it's Golden State. I mean, was it Patrick Williams, Milwaukee? You know, high, that's nice. High, highly Patrick recruit. Baldwin. Patrick Baldwin. I'm sorry, Baldwin, Patrick yeah. Baldwin out of yeah. Milwaukee. Highly tied recruit. Didn't play well for his dad in Milwaukee was the story. But I just look at. I don't know much about the kid. I don't know what I've yeah. read. But anytime they, uh, Golden State drafts you, I'm like, no pressure, yeah. no rush. They know how to develop. Uh, we are pressed for time. Kurt, thank you so much, man. We appreciate you. Can't wait to talk to you next week. Because it'll be interesting to look back at the draft and see what kind of, like we talked about with Aiden, what kind of groundwork was laid for what happens in free agency. So we'll talk to you in a couple of days, man. Thanks for your help. Appreciate you. Hey, thanks for watching Brother From Another on YouTube. Make sure you hit subscribe before you leave and be sure to watch us 3 to 5 p.m. Eastern Time on Peacock. Appreciate you.